He's taping an interview over in the corner for Fox and Friends. You can see it tomorrow. It's with Pete Hegseth, 6 a.m. Eastern. The show starts. The president could come on stage any minute. Well, he's got a lot to say about the New York Times op-ed, you can bet, Colin Kaepernick and probably a lot more. Uh, but he will say as much about his signature 2016 issue, probably. It's immigration. With all the news lately, the border seems to have receded in the background. And Coulter has noticed that. She's the author of many books, including a new one, Resistance is Futile, How the Trump-Hating Left Lost Ladies Its Collective Mind. She joins us tonight. So, Anne, if you were writing the president's speech tonight, what would you have him say? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I'd say someone just reminded me that I'm president and I don't need Congress to build the wall, so I think I'm just going to start. <laughs> and then the, the crowd would cheer, and on MSNBC they would say, but that's not true. You need Congress to build a wall. To which she would say what? Um, pull out your pocket constitution and see who the commander-in-chief is, who has all the executive branch power in his hands. They are all in one man. He has the Department of Defense. He has Homeland Security. I mean, if we were suddenly attacked by China, he wouldn't sit around... Um, um, or North Korea, he wouldn't sit around saying, well, I'd like to respond, but Congress just won't write that bill. Um, he'd say, no, I'm the commander in chief. I have the power to defend against an invasion and we're being invaded. And so he doesn't need the Congress to appropriate the funds for the wall. He can just do it. Correct. I mean, he has, he has basically what, other than Social Security and Medicare, 90 percent of all federal money is in Department of Homeland Security and Department of Defense. And this is both Homeland right. Security and Defense. Um, I mean, I'm sure, did he have to get a special bill when we bombed Syria? By mistake, it turned out. Um, no, obviously, there are discretionary, discretionary funds there, and, and they don't need to be spent just to send off bombs to make Boeing even richer than they already are for no purpose at all. Huh. So why isn't that happening? I th suspect everyone around him is telling him, no, you can't do that, which is why I'm glad I have the opportunity on your TV show to say, yes, you can, Mr. President. Remember November 8th, 2016? Remember that great night? You're president. Um, you, of course you can build a wall. I mean, that is most of what the military did for the first hundred years. We weren't going around remaking the rest of the world. It was the military um, building forts on our border. Defending American borders is the number one job of the commander-in-chief. And again, the Constitution makes him Wait, 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 wait. That's not true. I mean, the number one job of the military is to increase the GDP of third world <laughs> countries and bring democracy to cultures that hate it, isn't it? <laughs> yes, and to create a training ground for ISIS. And um, I just, you let me just slip through that little bombing Syria thing. It's probably been mentioned on your show. It's been, been mentioned in very few other places on my Twitter feed. It has been mentioned about six months after we, we bombed Syria because they were allegedly using nerve gas. Um, the U.N. Was, was over there doing tests. They're, they're taking all the corpses. They're chopping them up. They're looking for, you know, what, what killed these people. Turns out no nerve gas was used. Yeah. Well, some of us pointed that out, like, the day after it happened. It was transparently that. false. Right. <laughs> it, it was fake. It was a lie. Uh, and that was obvious to us. So I guess what you're really saying is the staff of the executive branch is not simply writing op-eds bragging about their subversion. <laughs> They're working full-time to do the opposite of what the president promised to do when he was elected. Yes, and, and Mitch McConnell. I mean, this is kind of shocking that McConnell comes out and says, yeah, we're going to send you an omnibus bill. We'll get to the wall after the election, you know, because it will be so much easier after a blue wave. <laughs> do you think, this is my last question, but it's a sincere one. As a political matter, do you think the Republicans in Congress would do better if the president unilaterally built a wall? Yes. Yes, I think a lot of his base is quite demoralized. I mean, I express it on Twitter. Um, I was at, at, at the um, this big fair thing, that's the immigration outfit in Washington yesterday, um, and met a lot of sheriffs a lot of angel moms um, and also you know I go about my life and I meet people and I can tell you a lot of people who don't want to put it in their Twitter feeds themselves because they feel like you know Trump is our only hope and so they don't want to criticize him at all right. 
boy, do they like me doing the border wall right. updates. They want somebody reminding them of this, and they well, are and really you, disappointed. You've been relentless on that, and we appreciate it. <laughs> Ann Coulter, thank you. Thank good you. Good luck with the book, which is great. Thank you. Up next, a new law in California lets people, including kids, change their gender as easily as they change their clothes. So what other biological traits, basic ones, are adjustable? If you can change your sex, why not your race? It's a fair question, and we're going to ask it. Plus, we'll continue to watch for the president's arrival in Billings, Montana. Speech scheduled to start in just moments.